Okay, so welcome back. Today we're going to start um, a two-part series, maybe longer, where we're going to help you to understand what can be a kind of complicated subject when dealing with um, software development. Um, we're going to be talking about C-Sharp, Visual Studio, Windows Forms, and we're going to address a topic that we're going to hopefully make a whole lot easier for you to understand, and that is the topic of asynchronous and synchronous programming and tasks and how does that all work? And we're going to help you by giving you some real-world analogies that should help to make it a whole lot easier. Now, one of the reasons why this has been a challenging subject is because over the years, there have been many different approaches as the software like Visual Studio and C Sharp, as they grew, there were different approaches into how to do these asynchronous parallel tasks. So it can be kind of confusing. You go on the internet and you find stuff that turns out is 10 or 15 years old and they don't really do it that way anymore. So we're going to hopefully give you a very simple way to do this asynchronous or parallel programming so it will help you. And we're going to start out by using a simple analogy. So the analogy is that of a factory. And in this factory, we have some robots that are doing something, whether they're building computers or building cars or whatever. We have robots who are doing some tasks, and we have a supervisor whose job is to figure out what the tasks are and assign them to the robots. So we have two basic functions here. We have a supervisor function, and we have a worker function, a robot worker function that is assigned a task by the supervisor. The task of the supervisor figure out what are the tasks for the robots, and also to launch the tasks. Basically tell the robot, you go do this. When the robot is off doing that task, the supervisor is free to do other stuff. So it's a very efficient way of doing things. Um, you can say, hey, go do this task. I'm going to go do other stuff. I'm busy. Um, so it can be very efficient. And there's also multiple ways for this to work. So let's say that the supervisor tells this robot to go do some task there are different types of tasks that he might be telling the robot to do. Uh, one of them is, hey robot, just do the task. You don't need to report back to me, right? I trust you, you know, maybe I just want the robot to go open the door so that the, the shipper can bring in some boxes. Just go open the door. I don't care about any feedback. Just go do it. I'll trust you. I'm going to go off and do other stuff. So one type of task is just go do it. No need to report back to me. Another type of task is, hey, let me know when you're done. All I need to know, you go do it, but I need to be notified somehow that you're done, right? Because maybe you doing that allows me to start another task that relies on that door being open. Or maybe the task is go build a computer from parts and let me know when you're done, um, because when that computer is done, I need to tell somebody else to go get that computer and do something. So either it's a just do it, no need to report back, or just notify me when you're done, because I need to do something based on when you're done. A third type is I need to actually get an answer when you're done. So go do it. But for example, maybe the task is build some computers and when you're done, come back to me, not only tell me that you're done, but I also need to know how many computers did you build and what type. So I may need some feedback. So either he doesn't care or he wants to be notified when you're done, or he also wants some feedback, you know, give me some numbers or give me a signed document that you got or whatever. So this is very similar to the concepts you probably already know in software development. And that is having a method. And the method either returns void, returns nothing. It's basically just go do that method. Don't, don't let me know what the answer is. Or it can return a value, it might return a double or something. Or it might just send a notification. We did a video a while back about uh, events and delegates. Maybe it just initiates an event when it's done. This is nothing new if you're familiar with any software development. It's basically different types of tasks and you know how they respond. So these are the things we, when we write our software, we're going to have to think about building like a supervisor function and then a robot function. And the supervisor function is going to give the robot some tasks. 
and either doesn't care the result or wants to know when you're done or wants to know what the answer is. So, for example, if the task is to build a computer, that means get the parts, get the case, get the power supply, get the motherboard, put them all together, and either let me know when you're done or tell me how many you did or that kind of thing. Now, the supervisor also might want to keep track and notify others of the status of things. So the supervisor might want to go to the user interface or go to a computer and say, okay, I've got my robot did 10 computers and you can enter that into, the, into his user interface so that others are aware of what the status is. We've got 10 computers that were built. Now, also, the supervisor might have multiple robots. So one robot is assigned to build some computers. Another robot might be assigned to do a completely different task. So you might have two robots, but they're all doing things at the same time. He could say, go do this, and this guy goes off and does it. Robot number two does his task, but they're totally independent. Or robot number three, you can have all of these being done simultaneously, which is really very efficient. You don't have to wait for robot one to be done before task number two can be completed. And same with task three. Maybe you've got three robots that are totally independent, can off and do their tasks, and they don't rely on each other. Now, what we've talked about has two basic concepts in it. One is synchronous and one is asynchronous. Synchronous means in series, which means you do one task. When that's done, you can then do the next task. When that's done, you do the next task. Asynchronous, the A in asynchronous means not synchronous. That's why it's called asynchronous. It's also can be described as simultaneous. You have simultaneous or asynchronous tasks, or you have tasks being done in parallel. So you've got multiple robots all doing things simultaneously. So synchronous, you do step one, then step two, then step three. Asynchronous, you do all of these simultaneously. So in the real world, we might have a factory. Maybe they're building a computer. So you've got multiple workers, each with a task, and maybe the task is to build a computer or put together parts of a computer and then put that on the production line and the computer can be built. Now, here is an example of a more realistic factory where we've got different production lines. You can see we've got some what are called conveyor belts and we've got people working on each conveyor belt and they are doing things asynchronously, right? You have one production line, one conveyor belt that's doing one thing, maybe building a computer. Another conveyor belt running physically in parallel. Maybe they're building other computers. And here we've got one, two, three, four, five, six conveyor belts, six production lines, and they're all doing things simultaneously. But keep in mind, we have these workers that are doing things synchronously. In other words, actually this is a fruit factory, but make believe it's a, a computer factory. You might have this first person is assigned to take out of, a, out of a big box, take a case, a computer case, put it on the conveyor. The next person is assigned to grab a power supply, put it inside that case. The next person is assigned to take the motherboard, put it inside the case and wire it up. And then it goes on down the line and people finish and build the computer. But these can be done asynchronously. You can have multiple production lines building computers, but each worker is doing things synchronously. You have to have a case before you can put the power supply inside. And you have to have the case and the power supply before you can put the motherboard in and hook it all up. So we have here, we've got synchronous people doing things in series and also multiple conveyors where they're doing things asynchronous or in parallel. And the same concept applies to software development. So let's look at a mathematical analogy. Let's say I've got a simple equation here. The equation says three times two plus 14 times eight, and we want the answer. What, what is the answer to that equation? Well, you can do it synchronously. Your computer can do it synchronously. And what it would do is it first might come up with a value for three times two, which is six. Then it will calculate 14 times eight, and then it will add those two to get you the answer. So it does this, 
then does this, then adds them. That's synchronously. Now, can you do this asynchronously? Well, kind of. You can partly do it asynchronously. You can first have one processor multiply three times two, but you can also have at the same time or asynchronously, you can have a processor calculate 14 times eight. They're totally independent of each other, so you can calculate them separately asynchronously. However, you can't add them to get the final number until you have the answer to three times two and the answer to 14 times eight. So you have to wait until you've got this answer and this answer before you can add them. So you've got asynchronous multiplications, but the final is synchronous because you have to wait for the answers before you can add them. So that's very, very important. So if we were going to write code, we might write code where we have a method to multiply these numbers, and then another method to multiply these numbers simultaneously, and we wait for both of them to be done, and then we can do the final addition. In our code, we're going to do that exact same thing, and we're going to use this format. We're going to run a task that, that calls a method that multiplies three times two, and we're going to use this format, task.run, and that says go off and in asynchronous mode or asynchronously or in parallel, multiply this. Then the, the supervisor can also do a task.run that says multiply 14 times eight simultaneously. And then we're going to await when both of these are done, when all of the tasks, in this case, these two tasks are done, we will have the answer and we'll be able to access the answer from these tasks. So it's like waiting for both robots to go off and do it and come back. When both robots have returned, they'll give you a number, which is the result of multiplying 14 times eight, and the other one will give you three times two, and they'll hand that to the supervisor, and he will then be able to calculate the final answer. So that's the basic concept behind tasks and asynchronous and await. Now, to keep track of those tasks, again, the supervisor is going to have to keep track of the robots. The way we're going to do it is we're going to have like a notebook where he writes down, okay, I gave to robot number one a task to multiply three times two, and I gave robot number two a task to multiply 14 times eight. I'll write down those tasks in my notebook, and what I'll do is I will wait for both of them to come back to me, give me the answers, and then I will keep it in my notebook. I'll be able to access those answers to get the final answer. So in our code, we're going to have a list of tasks in our notebook, and we're going to call it tasks, and we're going to define that in our um, C-sharp code. So this should look familiar to you when you go into the code. You're basically going to Keep a notebook listing all the tasks that you've given to the robots so that you can then access them later. And the way we do it, we've got our list of tasks. So every time we do a task.run, multiply three times two, we're going to add that to our list of tasks. So now we've got a list with both tasks for the robots that we can then wait till they're done and then access them later. So that's the basic concept behind uh, multi-threading, async, and await. There's a bunch of other stuff that we'll, we may talk about later, but hopefully this gives you a good idea of how this all works. So if you like any of these videos, I encourage you to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notifications. But most of all, please let others know that we're here so we get some views. Really appreciate it. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.